At the outset, let me once again thank Ms. Pranavi and the Director of RK Sepex Institute for the nice introduction, as well as the opportunity provided to me to present my views and thoughts on the present topic. So as today is Teacher's Day, let us commemorate the great personality, Dr. Sarvay Pali Radhakrishnan, who was an inspiring teacher, great academician, and also who served as the president of this nation. Just remembering the historical words, uh, historical dates about this great personality, according to my opinion, is of no use. We should know what is the takeaway from his personality. What is that we can imbibe from this great personality? So taking an iota of uh, inspiration, uh, taking uh, some of the uh, characters and qualities from his personality. Uh, I would like to move on to the present topic that is outcome-based education. What is outcome-based education? Is it something new? Or is it a Western-based thing that we have imbibed of late? Outcome-based education is a student-centric educational methodology or policy where the outcomes at every level are assessed and measured so that the graduates become employable at the end of the course or at the end of the curriculum. Now, this we may find new, but this is nothing new. In good olden days, in good olden days, a carpenter used to teach his son how to do carpentry work. A goldsmith used to teach his son how to do goldsmith work so that they can earn their livelihood. Over the period, what happened to this nation is the educational policy that the nation adopted became useless and the graduates became unemployable. Most of the graduates are either unemployable or they are settling into jobs or into careers which are quite different from what they have learned or what they have gained. Why is this happening is because the either, first thing is the curriculum is outdated. Second, second thing is the students are, have not acquired the necessary skill sets and attributes needed to make them employable. So what can be done in this regard? Is it the responsibility of the teacher alone? Is it the responsibility of the students alone? No, it is a collective responsibility of the entire stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Stakeholders, employers are the stakeholders, teachers are the stakeholders, Parents are the stakeholders. The managements of the institutions are the stakeholders. So it is the collective responsibility of all these people. Even the government is also the stakeholder. So it is the collective responsibility of all these people to revive the educational system, to bring out useful citizens to the nation. So how to make this possible? At the institutional level, the teachers, the heads of departments and principal has to design a curriculum keeping in view the employability aspects of the students. That means they must have a strong memorandum of understanding with the industries. So otherwise what is happening is a mechanical engineering student is uh, shifting into a software or he's shifting into a banking sector, he's shifting into uh, law or something else because he is finding, he or she is finding that particular course not useful. Okay, now <clears throat> I find the invitees with different age groups. I find the invitees uh, of, uh, from different 
academic and educational backgrounds. So I would like to make this topic more general. So is this outcome-based education just limited to technical education, technical education, technical institutions? No, not at all. Outcome-based education should start from the school level. School level means what type of curriculum is being inducted into the school? Is this curriculum paving way for higher education? Is there any link between the school level education? Is it becoming the foundation stone for higher education? And ultimately, is that higher education making that student employable or not? So there must be an interrelation connectivity among the curriculums starting from the primary school to the university level. This is what is not happening in India. Now, in 2021, our central government has started slowly opening its eyes and has started the National Educational Policy 2021. I, don't, I doubt how far this policy will be successful. <clears throat> now, when it comes to school, what sort of educational system has to be adopted, especially at the high school level? Laboratory induction should be incorporated. Why? Because if I teach a student an equation in chemistry without showing the application of that, how will he or she understand what is it all about, where it is applied, and how it is going to be useful to her or him in, the, in his higher careers? That is the reason most students end up joining, uh, taking courses based on their peer group, not based on their interests. So here, teachers, parents, and everyone should guide them in selecting their appropriate career. Not just <clears throat> without these foundations of uh, laboratory courses and methodologies, mere guidance will not uh, induce interest into the student. This outcome-based education is not just about rote learning. It is not just about classroom teaching, but also it, en <clears throat> it encompasses various aspects of learning. So you make the students do projects. You make them into a group, give a topic to them and see what kind of outcome is achieved? What sort of outcome is achieved? This is for the teachers. What I wish is, for example, if you are teaching a student how to make an electrical connection, a basic electrical connection, how to make, how to uh, light the bulb through a battery, through a wire, through a switch and the bulb. We teach them on classroom board by drawing the circuit and uh, invoking a lot of mathematical symbols and equations. But what happens in reality should be known to the student. So this just doesn't happen by writing down the examination. It happens only if they get the hands-on experience about the uh, particular aspect or particular concept. That is the reason practicals have to be introduced into the school curriculum. Not that all the students will be able to do the projects at their own, but teachers should aid them in solving the project based problems and they should demonstrate things for better learning and better understanding. This should happen at the school level. And they should tell them the applications of uh, each and every concept where it is applied. For example, they will be learning concepts like uh, uh, refraction, diffraction, and all these things are reflection in light. Where it is applied, I will not be able to visualize what is diffraction unless you show me the light getting diffracted from a particular object. Elephant, sir, the pass, pass. You take the students. Hello. Please, please, please continue. Sir. Hello. Once the uh, light is seen getting diffracted, you will understand the concept of diffraction. In Western, world, in Western world, we observe a lot of 
projects being handled by the students what is the advantage of uh, uh, grouping a set of students hello somebody is uh, one minute sir. somebody is daniel could hello please, daniel could you please switch off your mic daniel baba hello daniel please one minute sir. daniel please switch off your mic okay please sir please proceed hello yes yes sir please go ahead sir. so what happens if you group a set of students and make them do a project two things will happen first thing is they will learn from each other they'll try to communicate among themselves and they'll experiment something even if it is not successful at school level you should group students to make them understand the concepts that they have learned in the classroom at the practical level so that will ensure that some of the students who did not understand the concept through classroom teaching might understand something through the practicals that is the main advantage second thing is designing the curriculum designing the curriculum as i told you earlier the curriculum should be in a connected fashion so cur curriculum if there is a disconnectivity between what you have learnt at the 10th standard and what you will be learning in the plus 1 and plus 2 standard that is not a continuous education that is not a continuous education so these things to should be taken care of initially and second thing is this is for the graduate students for the college level students what should they learn and how to select a particular course course selection should be based on their interest no matter whatever whatever the course may be popular if you keep on selecting a course based on popularity and not based on interest you will end up losing interest on that in a short period of time and at the college level especially for the technical engineering graduates and for polytechnic courses even for science graduates like bsc msc what should be done is your course making the graduates employable that is the first question the management the teachers and the heads of departments should ask themselves if not redesign the course uh, clubbing the uh, employers uh, along with you you discuss with the employers what is the need of the hour and what they are looking at from the what are the attributes they are looking at from the students so <clears throat> you design that first course next is assessing whether the students have achieved the set outcomes or not how do you assess examination system is not the only means to assess students outcomes examination system how do we set the examination system examination system should be set based on bloom's taxonomy what is this bloom's taxonomy bloom has uh, designed defined six or five levels of uh, uh, knowledge first one is remembering second one is understanding third one is analyzing fourth one is applying fifth one is evaluating and sixth one is creating if from the school level if the entire education system is properly designed then the student will completely achieve the bloom's pyramid the top topmost position of the bloom's pyramid is creation the bottom most uh, base of the bloom's pyramid is remembering that is the reason nursery students uh kindergarten students and uh, low as uh, primary school students the curriculum should be based on remembering they are not expected to analyze anything they are not expected to apply anything up to the fifth standard you design the curriculum so that students will remember and by the time they reach fourth or fifth standards you design the curriculum such that they understand from 6th and 7th standards onwards 
the student should be able to analyze what they have learned slowly they should start analyzing if they are not able to analyze there is something wrong with the curriculum there is something wrong with the teaching methodology there is something wrong with the way you are implementing the methodology this is where practicals come into picture that is the reason i insist that from the school level the management teachers and the heads of departments should frame a network such that students are exposed to practicals that will help them analyze the concepts that they have learned that is the next stage and by the time they graduate from the high school and when they enter the junior level uh, college level or intermediate plus 1 plus 2 the curriculum should be designed such that the intermediate should bridge the gap between the curriculum that is designed at the school level and the curriculum they are going to learn at the graduate level so intermediate is a bridge it's a gap uh, sorry it's a bridge that fills the gap between the school level education and college level education so at the college level education the student should be able to evaluate what is what the evaluation comes out of analysis if they had properly analyzed the concepts that they have learned at the plus 1 plus 2 level and the 10th standard level they will be able to evaluate once they know how to evaluate they themselves know what is to be learned so that it will make them employable by the time they graduate from the course are we designing the curriculum in this fashion that is the first question we should ask ourselves not just ourselves but the entire teaching fraternity should ask themselves whether they have designed the curriculum based on bloom's pattern i have observed a lot of college level question papers and even school level question papers just to make the students secure more marks they are designing the questions at the very base level like for example if the question is mention the names of the great scientists you have known what type of category of question is this mention the names of great scientists mention five names of great scientists you know that is a question based on our remembrance that is a question that uh, uh, we retrieve from the historical data that we remember there is nothing we apply there that is there is nothing we learn new about it instead if you ask the question what is the take away from each of the scientists personalities and what is the common thing about them here the student will try to analyze here the student will try to distinguish each personality from others and he will try to draw logical conclusions out of the five personalities similarly in professional courses it is important that you should be able to understand analyze apply evaluate and create things that you have learned that these attributes make you employable apart from this good communication skills and good personality will <clears throat> set you will get you a better position in life and of course all these things without hard work are not possible now coming to the graduate curriculum as i told you how one may ask the question the industrial field or industrial world is a dynamic world which keeps on changing every now and then then the question, teachers and professors and uh, the what do you call the management might blame me how do we incorporate changes in curriculum every 3 months is it possible i am not talking about changing the entire syllabus or curriculum overnight or every at every 3 month interval what i am trying to say is try to incorporate the new technologies give them access to uh, <coughs> industrial symposiums give them access to um, webinars give them access to conferences 
so that they will learn what is the order of the present day what is required for the present day apart from the their regular curriculum so outcome based education is not just rote learning it talks about brainstorming it talks about discussions among the peer group it talks about how to handle the projects it talks about practically implementing what is learnt in the classroom so that they will assess themselves what are their strengths and weaknesses in their in this particular technical aspects and is this leading them in any direction or not is this course useful or not so there are various aspects to this outcome based education one is redefining the course curriculum every 3 every few years so that the students who graduate from the curriculum are suitable for the jobs at hand the second thing is from the students perspective what should be done from the students perspective what should be done is you gather as much as information about the program that you are going to join in what is happening is with the today's present internet connected uh, world everything is in our hands we can access the best college website we can access the best uh, what do you call the course what is the course content what are the requirements from the um, employers and it is not just the responsibility of the teachers management it is the question that the student should ask themselves am i employable am i employable have i acquired the attributes needed for the present job or not if not it is high time you do that how to do that meet as many people as you can in that current profession try to attend the course seminars try to acquire the practical exposure and skills uh try to acquire a position as an apprentice as uh, uh, what do you call uh, an entry level engineer if it is not a paid job also even if it is not a paid job also just to learn the work so all these things will help you build your career and uh, what outcome based education does apart from this outcome based education gives a feedback to the employers and all the stakeholders like uh, the colleges about how the program is 4 years after the graduation or 5 years after graduation or 6 years after graduation of a particular student because the alumni will be giving the feedback other stakeholders like employers will be giving the feedback the parents will be giving the feedback the teachers who taught that particular curriculum will be giving the feedback so it is a closed loop cycle where you can find everything connected everything connected so that the system can be improved continuously so this is quite different from the rote learning process that the earlier generations had learned where passive teaching methodology was adapt adopted and students had to learn what is outdated what was outdated from at that point of time or even today so my dear friends this outcome based education as i say is the process which needs to be adopted at every level even the students have to adopt this don't throw this in the front of the face of the teachers or uh, uh, the management or other other stakeholders saying that it is your job to uh, create the um, employable graduates it is also your job to see that you become employable by acquiring the graduates how to do that select the appropriate course select the appropriate institution <clears throat> select the value added courses you that are available online all these things all these things will uh, enhance your attributes required for gaining a good job okay and from for the for all the invitees who are at the school level what is important is try to do some practicals for better understanding so that if you build the foundation at your school level you will notice that some of the subjects have added value to your 
thinking process and you will automatically gain interest in that subject and uh, no one needs to guide you regarding what course you have to select of course popularity of the courses their employability also dictates the selection of the course but ma ma majority of the people don't select courses uh, because they are afraid of them especially courses like mathematics physics because they are not taught in the way they, that they need to be taught in many schools teachers do not teach mathematical concepts by showing them the relevant applications in the day to day life or in the field of science technology even in social so, so if you if teachers give relevant examples in the classroom and if they can demonstrate through practicals students will gain certain interest and they will slowly build foundational strength and that will enhance their interest in that particular subject and uh, that will guide them in selecting the appropriate course at the college level in spite of the fact whatever is popular in spite of the fact whatever is popular they will be selecting the course of their choice once you select the course of your choice automatically it will become easy for you to gain knowledge and to become successful with these few words i would like to end my talk if i will be happy to answer questions if you have thank you